Now, the next thing we're going to do is add the head wrap to our mouse that we made earlier on, now that we've finished our body wrap. So you want to take the piece that you made from earlier on and place it lengthways over the head of your mouse so that his arms are sticking out either side. And you want more of the piece to be around the back of the mouse's head as opposed to the front. So the piece is a little bit shorter than I'd like. So what I'm going to do is just take it off and I'm going to give it a stretch in the direction that the fibres are flowing. And that will just pull your piece out a little bit more because it is, they are quite malleable, these pieces. So you want to place about an inch over the chest so that you've got those frilly ends that are covering the, sort of the neck and chest area. Um, and that way you're not going to obscure all that pink belly that you added a moment ago. And then the rest of it's going to be tacked onto the back. So I'm going to be using my fine twisted needle to tack these in place. I'm going to hold it down nice and firmly so it's nice and tight against the head. Taking my twisted fine needles, I'm just going to anchor that into position, securing it against the mouse's chest. And that's all we're doing at the moment is just securing it down and then we're going to work on the shaping in a moment. So you want to go under the neck area, start forming that curve and get that tacked in around the head as well um, because you don't want the gap. If you've got that gap which will kind of form an air pocket it will um, mean that the head wraps quite loose so kind of make sure you get underneath that neck and tack it in place there. And then spin it over and do the same thing on the back and you should have about two to two and a half inches on the back and don't worry if you've got quite a bit here you can always pull some off if it's too much um, but if it's kind of anywhere in this ballpark of two to two and a half inches just tack it in place and it just gives a bit more shape and thickness to your mouse when he's finished so I'm just tacking very lightly. We're not going to go around the arms yet. We're going to do something different with that in a moment, but just tack it around the neck area again so you don't have that air pocket. And you can see there's quite a bit of looseness there, so I'm just going to tack that down into place. Give it a good stab. Be cautious though, because you've got the armature um, very close to this side of the neck that you don't um, hit any wire and snap your needles. So you're using that bouncing motion that we spoke about earlier on. Um, you're going in about five millimetres with your needle and bouncing the needle in and out in the same direction. So I'm just tacking some of the looseness around the arms under the arm but we don't want to go in tightly yet. We just want to get it tacked in loosely. And then we're just going to go on the top of the head as well and get that tacked down so we can't move it. Just get everything secured into position. I'm just going to go around that neck area again because there's a bit of looseness there which you can see. Right, that looks good to me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap my fine needle for my medium twisted needles. And we're going to tack down those sides. And this is probably the trickiest part of the entire sculpture, because if you get this wrong, the mouse can look quite lumpy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our cake analogy that we used earlier on, icing the cake. So we don't want all this to ruche together when we felt it down, so we're going to do it methodically and we're going to make sure that both sides have equal amounts of wool on them, so we haven't got one side with more than another and I'm just going to pull some away because I don't want to have too much, otherwise this will all gather around the mouse's arm and you'll have nasty, nasty lumps of extra wool. So don't be afraid to pull some away because in some ways it's better to have not enough than too much because we can always felt some more Gotland white over the top of any gaps that we may have. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just pull down the middle section of the head on one side and just felt that down towards the bottom end with our medium needle. 
and get that nicely secured into place. Then what we're going to do is we're now going to work down the middle of all of the other gaps, pushing them downwards. And ideally you want to be using your needle one over the other as opposed to side by side. So I'm just going to felt down the middle of that section there. So now I've created another two sections. So I'm going in side by side here, but I should be going in one over the other. And we're just going to felt that down into the arm area. And then go back to the other ruche, felt between that. Felt between this section here. Take your time with this. Like I always say, it's better to do things slowly and get it right rather than rush it and then have to correct mistakes. It's not a problem to correct mistakes, but it just makes life easier for you if we just um, take it slowly and then you can see if something's going wrong. Um, more easily as opposed to rushing it and then realising once you've done it. And I do that a lot sometimes. I, I rush things and then make mistakes and then think, oh God, I've got to go all over again now. And it's just really frustrating. So just take your time with this. So just sticking, concentrating your needle more towards the sort of the end of where we're felting in. Don't worry about felting at the top because we don't want to use our medium needle around the head too much because the needles are too thick for the shaping side of things. So we're just doing it to tack in, tack in the sides of the head. And this frilly bit here, I'm just going to tack this under the arm nice and loosely so it's just out of the way. And then I'm going to get my fine needle and I'm just going to tack all this down so it's nice and tight. So felting it, so you, when you're felt, felting around the arm, make sure that your wool is as flat as it can be and flush against the mouse's arm and then felting it down across the body. So again, you don't get any unsightly um, kinks or any wool gathering too much um, in lumps. So moving on to the other side, I'm just pushing this with my finger. So pushing the head into where we've just felt it and then pulling the wrap a little bit towards me um, just because I've not got quite as much there as I'd like. And I'm just going to pull the centre down again. And once again, with my medium needles, I'm just going to tack that middle piece down into place, into the arm area. So I'm going about an inch up and then felting down towards the arm. So same thing again, take the middle of the of the gather and just go through the middle of it. What happens if you don't do this and you just go in and, and just felt everything down really quickly, you will end up with um, a lumpy finish at the arm. So just just make sure that you go through it methodically going through the middle of the the air pockets, if you like. So getting it in nice and tightly into the neck area. And the medium needle's great for this because we can use a reasonable amount of force around the neck area to get that tucked in really tightly and firmly. And because it's kind of going into the gap of the neck, it doesn't matter that we're going to have a big indentation there because we kind of want that anyway to create more definition between the head and the body. So I've got those frilly pieces again that I need to tack down. So I'm just going to swap back to my fine needles again and I'm going to tack that down into place, keeping it flush. And you can kind of like move the wool under the arm as you felt it. As you can see what I'm doing here with my fine needles, I'm, I'm felting, I'm moving the needles up and down. But as I'm doing so, I'm moving them across the body to get those loose pieces of wool felted down as flush as I can with the body. Go under the arm as well. It's always easily forgotten to go under the arm. Okay, so that looks good. So we've got our head wrap tacked into place. So our next task is to now felt all this down and get it looking as mousy as possible. So we're going to stick with our fine needles and we're going to look at 
felting the shape into the head of our mouse now. I'm just going to give his head a bit of a, a wiggle. And we're going to start felting that looseness, starting from the top and working downwards. And getting all those gaps tacked in more firmly now. Don't worry about this, that will go as we felt the head down. So don't worry about any kind of small gaps that you might see on your mouse. They'll dissipate as you start felting everything into place. So I'm just giving that, that neck area and chest area another good felt to make sure that everything's nicely felted into itself. And here we want to start creating a kind of a rounded upside down rainbow edge around the neck and the head area to make it look more natural. So I'm going to start felting down the top of the head and you'll find there's quite a bit of looseness around here. So this will take a lot of time, so be patient. It's, it's something that will take a considerable amount of time to, to felt into place. But the reason that we're using um, a medium, apologies, a fine needle as opposed to a medium needle is because it's a very gradual process and you want that wool to felt down gradually so that you can see where it's going and you can shape it. If we were to use the medium needle, it would push everything in too quickly. Um, you're not able to undo what you've done and you can't get that gradual shape forming so it might be that you you shape somewhere and actually it doesn't look right um, so that's the reason why I'm using the fine needle and also it obviously gives a much nicer finish once the mouse is completed so I hope that makes sense just felting around the back of the head and getting all that looseness that um, you'll have from where you've just initially layered that wrap getting rid of all that looseness on the top so concentrate some of your felting towards the sides of the head but don't worry about the front of the head at the moment because we're going to be shaping that in a very specific way in a moment so just get rid of those air pockets around the sides of the head so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to squeeze in the sides of the head of the mouse just to give those sides more of an angle and it just creates more of a, a characterful head shape for us and it tends to give more of a youthful head shape as well so just going back to what we were talking about earlier in relation to using a fine needle um, when we're finishing off our head shape and creating the shapes. I'm just going to show you now the difference. So if I use my medium needles now into the back of the head, as you can see, it's creating a lot of indentation and a lot of lumps and bumps that we don't want. And that's why we're using our fine needle. It gives us a lot more control, although the medium needle is a, lot, is a lot quicker to use. The finer needle gives us that ability to gradually shape our head and give our mouse that more professional finish at the end. So I'm concentrating on getting a flatter top to the head and more angled at the sides because the style I like to go for, and you'll find your style as you progress with needle felting, but the style I like to go for is that cute kind of pixar -y look or something you might see in the Muppets and that's the kind of head shapes that they generally tend to go for if you look at Pixar films or look at a Muppet movie. So really focusing around the neck area and then going down around the sides again and getting that all felted into place and then just starting to squeeze the mouse feeling for looseness and then felting that down. And I'm just pressing now, starting to press to where I'm roughly going to place my eyes and my nose. 
so I can get an idea of where things need to go and where I need to concentrate felting more. really focusing on all those little air pockets that you can see at the side of his head and getting that all felted in nice and firmly. And you can see where those creases were, they're starting to disappear now and the head's starting to really take shape. So I'm just going to go underneath the neck again, really focus on getting the definition in there. And I'm just felting upwards a little bit into the head to where the, the base of the nose is going to be because we want that to be slightly angled. So as you can see, I'm sort of squeezing here and I'm using my thumbs to kind of angle the head upwards and then I'm also pushing downwards. This is really important when you're making any head shape to squeeze it into place and it just helps you to get an idea of where you need to be felting and actually, if that position works, like I said before, so if you squeeze it, it will go back into its original shape. So you haven't lost anything and it kind of guides you. Um, if you were to squeeze it and you thought, actually, no, I don't like that position, then you can just let the shape go back to how it was and then reposition it into another another type of shape and see if that works. Whereas if you just go in all guns blazing and just felt it straight away, you kind of scupper yourself if it's not if it doesn't work. So still squeezing. And now what I'm doing is I'm starting to felt into where I'm going to be position positioning my eyes. And I'm just using my my index finger to just to press inwards. But I want to have that gap that kind of, not gap apologies, I want to have that raised part in the middle because that's going to be forming the nose. I'm just starting to felt that shape into place now. And I'm using a reasonable amount of force with my fine needles. So I'm going in quite deeply, probably a little bit past the five millimetres that we have been because there's a lot of space here that we need to get felted down. So you'll find that as you do this, um, your head will be quite soft. So whilst the head does seem very large at the moment, it will probably shrink down to about three quarters of the size once we finish the felting. And that's why I like to kind of make everything a little bit bigger than it needs to be because I know that I can felt this down relatively firmly and lose that, lose the kind of the, the majority of that bulk and get a nice tight finish to my sculpture. So what I'm doing, I'm just turning the mouse and just checking it to make sure that both sides are even as well. Remember, we're always looking for the symmetry. Unless you're making something that doesn't require symmetry, like, I don't know, like a monster or something like that. You're making sloth from the Goonies or something. So I'm still going in the eyes and what I'm doing now, I'm going to start looking at raising under the mouth and felting down here. So I'm going to be felting in an upwards motion and I'm just getting that, that shape around the neck and the bottom of the head. And do this gradually because this part of the face is quite important. We want to make sure that you still keep those plump, fluffy, fluffy cheeks. So just, just take this gradually, do a little bit at a time and then just check. I'm 
I'm just moving the head down now into position just to get an idea of what it will look like when it's finished, where I need to felt a bit more. And just felting more on top of the head. You'll find that on the top of the head there will be a lot of looseness. So it will take quite a while to get this all felted down. So I'm just going to felt that down and then I'll check again. And then pressing down. So you've got the flat top of the head and then angled sides. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm felting a few stabs, I'm pressing and then I'm checking. Stabbing the wool. Around any loose areas. I'm going to start forming that long nose. And once you start putting the, the features in place, the nose and the eyes, you'll see him change dramatically and he'll really start to look very mouse-like. Now, when it comes to the eyes, I want the eyes set relatively deeply into the face. So I don't want to tack, I don't want to felt the eye area too much. I don't want it too solid because when I add the eyes in later, I want them to sit deeper into the wall. Um, so they're kind of, they're set and they look like they could be a normal pair of eyes. So you don't want to go too firm with the eye holes. You just want to get that indentation in there. And then as I create the indentation with the eyes, the nose starts to naturally form. And you'll find that a lot when you're making sculptures from wool is that certain things that you do to the wall, for, like for instance, making indentations for the eyes creates other features. And you'll really start to see your mouse face take shape now and look a lot more mouse-like. So I'm just looking now and bending that nose upwards with my fingers so I can see where I want the nose to go. Something else to also bear in mind when you're um, felting your face is the eye position. And the general rule of thumb is that the higher the eye position, the older the face will look and the lower the eye position, the younger the face will look. So if we were gonna be creating a childlike mouse now, I would be looking to place the eyes probably about three quarters of the way down the face. Whereas vice versa, if I was looking to create an older looking mouse, I would be looking to place the eyes probably um, in the first quarter of the face on sort of the top half of the face. So it really does depend on the kind of look you want to go for. And also eye shape makes a big difference in terms of how a sculpture will look when you're, when you're making something. So a bigger eye makes a face look more youthful, whereas a smaller eye makes a face look older. So I've just sped things up here. Um, and as you can see, I'm just tacking in any additional looseness that I've missed and I'm using my needles side by side and I'm still going in by about five millimeters. And I'm just tucking in around the sides of the face now, um, very gently because I don't wanna push in too much too quickly and just creating more of a neck, but then where I'm pushing the wall in to create the neck, then it's creating more definition around the cheek area and giving that fuller cheek appearance. And we will be felting the cheek a little bit, but we don't want to go too heavy handed because we don't want to lose that plumpness that we're creating. 
overall by the end of the sculpture your your mouth should be relatively firm but there may be areas that are still a little bit more plump than others but it should never be very loose so you can see here I've got some quite big air pockets in the back of the head so I'm just going over the back of the head with my needle to get all those air pockets dissipated and I'm starting from the top and working my way down just concentrating a bit more around the eye area and the nose area and I'm just working my way from the inside out from about half an inch away from the top of um, from the middle of the nose and I'm just giving it a squeeze and then felting that into place again You want the centre, the um, the side profile, apologies, of the mouse's nose to kind of go downwards but then flick upwards and it gives it that nice cute finish. So as I'm pushing down against the nose on an angle on its side profile and I'm, I'm then kind of taking the tip where the tip of the nose will be and I'm pushing it upwards. I'm just felting that neck in a bit more. And once we start adding things in like the nose and the eyes and felting those in, that will add additional firmness to our head. But he's looking pretty good now. I'm just going to go over his head a bit more. Just ensuring that that's all nicely felted in. creating that shape around the base of the neck. So we've got some definition there and contrast between the head and the body. And as you make your mouse, you'll find certain things that you prefer and you'll incorporate that into your style of needle felting. So it's kind of an exploration of um, your style and the kind of things that you like within a sculpture and then making that your own. I'm just going round that nose again in an upwards motion so it's kind of flicking, looks like it's flicking up. And now would be a good time also to just take a photo and just check the symmetry on a photo as well. I'm pressing down the sides of the head. Getting that definition felted in. Those angles. And you can see why it is a time consuming process because you are constantly just checking and shaping. But this is also probably one of the more, the sort of, well, it's all fun, but this is um, the fun bit of the sculpture because you can really create character in this part of the, of the making process. I'm just giving him a rub. Just getting that, that little crease that came from when we tacked the head wrap on earlier on. When we add additional covering for the arms, that will that will go away. So don't worry about that. Just giving it a bit more of a felt to get it nice and flat. You can often get a good idea of symmetry with the feel as well. But he's all done. And now we're going to move on to the very exciting bit, which is adding his nut eyes and his nose. <laughs> 